Uh, so it's a great pleasure. My name is Ariel Hitron. I'm co-founder and CEO of uh, Second Nature. And I have here Sagi from Checkpoint. And we'll be talking about uh, AI role plays and the lessons that were learned from thousands of reps doing that. Uh, so Sagi, it's great. It's great to have you here with, with me today. And apparently working from home in this COVID environment that's across the globe everywhere. So thank you for joining. It's a pleasure. And uh, why, why not kick us off just for starters, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with, the, with Checkpoint and about Checkpoint in general. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, pleasure being here. Thank you for inviting me. By the way, I'd like to say that we call this area um, the home gym or AKA where the magic happened. So that's why you see all this uh, uh, mess up and of course no background options. So there you go. Uh, so my name is Sagi Kratu. I've been working with, uh, with Checkpoint for about 15 years, different positions and so on. For the past several years, I've been leading the training and product positioning. So it's a kind of a unique position where trying to hold both ends of the stick of teaching and being a technical uh, um, authority about the different uh, checkpoint products and solutions. And on the other hand, teaching how to sell them, how to position them, how to speak the right language in order to promote and, and speed up sales processes. Awesome. That's great. And I think uh, like most of the people know checkpoint, especially in the, in the technology space, but uh, just Tell the audience a little bit about uh, Checkpoint and its uh, unique position in the market. Sure, not a problem. So Checkpoint has been a market leader, a cybersecurity market leader for over 26 years. Uh, we have just a bit over 5,500 employees globally. Um, I believe it's over 100 countries and we have customers in over um, over 100 countries, uh, approximately, or a little bit more 100, than 100,000 customers worldwide. And these customers are of all sizes and we provide security or cybersecurity from the, the firewall, which is the network security component to the cloud, endpoints, mobile devices, and, and so on, to millions and millions of users. Uh, we have in our portfolio over 60 solutions and products. And just think about anything that is security pretty much is checkpoint. Um, and that's it. That's great. I think it's it's like cyber before the word cyber was coined. So it like goes as early as that and, and it's uh, it, it's really great. Uh, so 60 solutions and products, that's a ton. That's mm -hmm. a ton. So uh, maybe we'll just talk about like training, especially with, with the large sales team and uh, all of the auxiliary roles, not just the AEs, but the, uh, uh, not just the account executives meaning, but pre-sales and support, sales support and all of these, training all of them across all of these different solutions. So what, what's the training processes that you have today and how has the, these been working out for you? Sure, so out of the 5,500, we have approximately 2,000 people who are in the sales departments. Um, some of them are actual salespeople, some of them are security engineers, so the more technical sales, and some of them are channel oriented. I didn't say before, but Checkpoint is 100% channel driven, so we sell our solutions through our channel partners. Um, the way we, we, we train our people is, is, first of all, we have like a three pillar um, type of approach. How do we take information, you know, that our product management creates, our product marketing creates, and so on, turn it into knowledge and then in turn turn it into skill so things you know and things you are able to do with that knowledge and the way that we uh, are doing it first of all even before covid it was a hybrid approach where we had some on-prem type of training lms trainings um, what we call uh, uh, e-learning and what we've done in the past uh, year and a half or so, we actually created two main vehicles where we share the information and the skill and you know, it could be lab work, it could be assignments, it could be just watch this video as an awareness type of approach. And 
we, we call the one is uh, that is happening once a month is called Cyber Monday, where it's specifically dedicated into uh, announcements, new positioning, new messaging. And this is for what we call all hands. So for the entire field, we have three sessions, uh, one for uh, the APAC uh, region, one for the EMEA region, and one for the Americas, where the geo leaders um, lead these sessions with information we provide them on the new messaging from headquarters or the new product or new pricing catalog and so on. And that happens once a month on the, on the first Monday of every month. From that, based on the content of Cyber Monday, we have what we call boosts, weekly boosts. We invest or we ask our sellers to invest approximately between 20 and uh, 30 minutes a week to deep dive into what was covered in Cyber Monday. Now, when I say deep dive, it doesn't mean necessarily a technical, but more information or more uh, skill set on based on what uh, um, they heard about in Cyber Monday. And as part of that, uh, on the weekly boost, for example, we divide into the three populations. Remember, I said we have channel managers, we have salespeople, and we have um, security engineers. So we actually kind of target the information to the person who can use it uh, uh, the best. So technical information for the SCs, um, how to sell, how to position to the sales, and specifically how to work, What's why, why, why work with Checkpoint about this solution for our partner audience. And of course, we are also um, leveraging that into our partner community as well. Awesome, so quite quite a lot to take on. I'm just thinking about it like a monthly training to an audience of a few thousands and, uh, and then weekly kind of reinforcements or weekly boosts uh, as you call them. That sounds, uh, it, it sounds a lot, like there's a lot there. What would you say, uh, what would you say is the challenges that uh, that are when rolling out messaging and new products announcements and other things to such an audience? So, so that's a great question. So I think for the first challenge is getting the message out there. That's one thing. And we kind of uh, uh, are doing that with the boosts because boosts are uh, um, something that um, we, we insisted that you know people go through. And if they have questions or if they have issues, of course, they're always welcome to, uh, to turn to us. Getting the message out there. Second one is standardization. The fact that someone is watching a video or reading some sort of tech doesn't mean that they can actually formulate it into a pitch or formulate it into something that they need to show a customer or something that they need to present somewhere. So the standardization of, of the, the fact that someone is saying something in a webinar or in a, se a live session doesn't mean that um, people are taking that as is and saying that's the way they're saying it. So standardization. The second or the third uh, uh, challenge is that once we have that, because so, again, we, we're kind of thinking ahead, once we have that standardization, how do we know that it's actually happening? And how do we provide them with a, a safe place to, to practice that? I can share that in, in the past, let's say a year and a half ago or so, we did a, a very serious pilot with a few hundred of our sellers to simply record themselves pitching or telling a, a story about a specific product or solution. And again, we can say that maybe a few hundred, again, low hundreds have done that, but then we wanted to get feedback. Again, we as uh, enablement or training, uh, we don't have, um, all the resources to go through, let's say, uh, 200 uh, uh, pitching pitches. Um, if each of them is about five, 10 minutes long, that's 2,000 uh, minutes. We don't have that time. So, we, of course, we got the buy in of the managers, the first line managers, and we wanted them, okay, go over these uh, uh, pitches and provide feedback to your, uh, to your worker, to your um, um, team member. And you know, it was very low consumption or very low uh, um, attention span, again, because they have to sell, right? So they don't have that time either. So the, the, the challenge was, how do we get them to do it? How do we get them to do it even more than once? Because once you've done the pitch once, you don't know if it's good or bad, and you left it, you haven't practiced it. So these are the, the major challenges that, that I saw um, in, in kind of, creating the message and getting them to repeat the message and getting them to practice the message and getting them feedback on their messaging and how they deliver it. And, and this is where um, we kind of 
I think Ariel, correct me if I'm wrong, this is about the time where we found each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is when the love story began, right? This is when we found each other. Yeah, and I think that look, from my perspective, we, we hear it over and over again with, with companies and some call it like stand and deliver and some call it like uh, recorded pitches. And it's really hard to get people excited about those recorded pitches. And it's even harder to get managers kind of to review them, even though it's, it's a good exercise. Like everybody knows it's like eating your vegetable, but it's really hard to get them excited. And then we kind of uh, uh, connected and we've shown you what we're working on with the second nature and uh, essentially the tool itself gives them uh, the ability to do a two-way conversation or two-way simulation with a lot of feedback in it uh, allows like a think about it like a role play that allows uh, the rep to practice with jenny who's the the mock buyer different scenarios so just uh, like what was the experience from your end? I know that I've I've seen how it happens and how it's being rolled out to the team uh, on my end, but really interesting to hear like how how did you experience it? What was the process for you to kind of think about this when you first saw it and say yes, this is a this would be a good fit for what we're uh, struggling with, uh, and what was the feedback that you got from the team when this was kind of starting to being rolled out? Yeah, a great question. So what we did, uh, again, one of our strategies for this year is cloud, cloud security. And how do we position ourselves as a cloud security, uh, leading cloud security vendor? How do we spread the word that cloud is ch cloud security is checked? So what we did, of course, we, we connected with your uh, people and created a, a pitch exercise to make sure that everyone understands and knows how to deliver the basic um, cloud security, check, the check on cloud, cloud guard, that's the solution name, cloud guard solution um, to anyone, you know, like a, a two to five minute pitch telling the cloud guard story in a sense. And what we found is uh, we started as a pilot. It was an ongoing pilot, uh, quite a long one, just because we wanted to make sure that uh, we're getting what uh, uh, we thought we, we, we need to get. And the outcomes even surprised me. I don't know if you remember Ariel, but when we spoke about this, uh, I, uh, I simply said, no, it doesn't make sense. Let's run the, through the numbers again. So everything that was the challenge, or let's say 99% of what we had the challenge, if you remember what I called, called uh, like named the challenges, the standardization, getting, getting the word out, um, running the exercise more than once, you know, set it and forget it kind of thing, run it more than once, and, and getting the managers to look at something, Pretty much everything, you know, was answered. So, the way that we rolled it out is we introduced this new capability or new training, new exercises through our Cyber Monday, and we invited all the uh, the salespeople and the C's to uh, to run through this exercise, and we made it available through our weekly boost. And hundreds, uh, I think we are actually like at 1,800 people right now, if I'm not mistaken, Ariel. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, running through this exercise and the way we did it is that we showed them the the um how to run the pitch so we took someone who's an expert in in pitching or telling the cloud guard story by the way our reps hate the word pitch so we try not to use it pitching is for car sale you know used car salesmen we are not pitching we're telling the story we're uh, convincing customers and so on so that's a lesson i learned from them at least because we, at the beginning we called it a pitch pitch exercise Anyway, telling the cloud guard story. So they heard about kind of like the best uh, uh, um, storytelling about this solution. And then they had to show their stuff. And they did. And on average, each person did it at least three times, which was amazing. Again, remember, even if they get nothing, even if they don't pass, right, they learn something. Right, because we're looking for specific things. For example, I don't care how you tell the story, as long as you cover the three main benefits. When you tell the customer, listen, this will save you money, this will uh, uh, save your reputation, this will be easy to deploy, and so on and so on. And this was the main uh, objective. And after that, we actually added a, a, a short survey to, to, because it was new for us as well, just to understand what was uh, their feedback. And over 90%, when we asked them, do you want to do the video exercise or you want to do the AI exercise, 90% or a bit more 
said they want the AI exercise, which was amazing because we never get 90% of anything in surveys. <laughs> Uh, you know, 60%, 70%. So this was clear, clear cut. There was no questions about why and uh, uh, that it was, it was very, very clear. One of the answers in the free text, I remember, not one, but several of them, was first of all, it, it's, it's new. It's, it's something very, quote unquote, sexy. And, you know, I'm speaking to a, a computer. I mean, someone actually, when I, because I, I did some uh, um, kind of phone service where I asked them different questions and so on. And he said, you remember the first time you touched an iPhone? How your mind nearly exploded? I mean, touch screen <laughs> and so on. Because it, it, it didn't make sense, right? Because you were looking for the numbers. You wanted to chat. You know, you had to click up three times on each button to get the right letter and so on. This was completely, and this is how they compared it to, or at least I think it was like three or four people who said it's like you're on the precipice. You're on, on, the, on the edge of technology. And that drew a lot of people in. Remember, we are a technological company, so um, people are techies. Whether they're sales or whether they're technical or like SCs, they're techies. They are attracted to uh, to the edge of technology, the new thing. You know, these are the people who stay in line um, 14 hours for the next iPhone that they know that two weeks from now they can get it like with no line and so on. So this was quite an amazement. I actually learned a lot about our people again you know, 80-20 type of uh, mm -hmm. thing. Not everyone is the same. But I learned a, a lot about introducing new technologies to the company and, and you know, buying the right, uh, getting the right uh, buy-in and how to convince people and understand. And, and we, without their buy-in and the manager's buy-in and, and, and you're getting them excited, none of this would have happened. So um, it's, it's easy when you have a, a, something that like is the cutting edge technology. Right? Think about it. You're speaking to a computer. The computer speaks to you back. Re with context it's not like uh, what's your name sagi hello sagi it's not like that right so it's not like uh, hello world so very very exciting stuff great thank you this, this has been great and i think that just for the context for everyone the way it works is actually like a zoom conversation or like conversation we're having now but with Jenny, who's like an AI. And I think that what people, what I've seen in the surveys and speaking with, with some of the checkpoint sales professionals is they get excited about not being a pitch and being more of a conversation. That it's a two-way conversation, that they're being asked questions, that they're being put off guard, and that they can have this uh, kind of uh, ways to practice that's a little bit closer to real life it's not like a real human, but it gets closer and it can put you off your balance for a little bit, especially in the safe environment where you can practice it. So we started off with this pilot and then we roll it out, I think, uh, uh, more extensively. Maybe we could talk a little bit about the rollout since and the frequency of the usage and how it's being used, as well as uh, kind of the benefits that you're seeing with that and maybe also and we can get to it later but maybe also some of the pushbacks like what was hard what was hard for the people to kind of absorb and whatnot and then alan from the audience asked about the partner community so we'll definitely make sure to cover that in a bit but starting with the start we rolled out we've done the pilot everybody was excited that was awesome how did we actually put it in as part of a, an ongoing cadence that mm -hmm. that would actually yeah. be fit within your process so so um, we try to roll out a new exercise every month where we kind of enforce or, or let's say humbly request the, uh, the salespeople and SCs to, to do the exercise um, on, a, on a weekly basis. So we release it on a weekly boost. There's only four boosts a month or sometimes five, uh, but it's released within that week and they have a few weeks to, to finish it. And what's... Uh, um, Interesting is that, I mean, the, the way that I release it, because we want the AI to learn as well. So it's great that I'm writing the, the text or, and, and your guys are, are helping me uh, um, write the exercise and so on. What I do is the first week I release it as an optional. So we get a lot of uh, attraction. Like, let's say 50, 70 people are doing it as an optional. It's not mandatory. And then we take, you know, the top 10 uh, exercises and then we teach Jenny based on that. And then the following week or the following two weeks, we release it as, uh, as an official uh, exercise that people need to do it. I think we've done six ex exercises uh, uh, this year already. 
uh, from again from cloud to to endpoint and uh, uh, mobile dev mobile solutions, email security, and so on and so on. Just to tell the checkpoint story about that, we actually had a try with uh, um, to try and and challenge the SCs, the security engineers, with technical uh, let's say technical presentation or technical uh, um, showcasing the solution. Um, we have a, a solution called Harmony Browse, which is uh, an add-on to the browser that is uh, protecting file download, uh, phishing, phishing sites, and so on. And we wanted the exercise not just to tell the story, but demo it. And it was quite nice. Um, the, the, the SCs went into our demo platform and connected Jenny into the demo platform and showed Jenny, Jenny's the AI, of course, showed Jenny, um, about the solution. And again, Jenny um, cannot see the screen, of course, but Jenny mm -hmm. can hear what you're explaining. And if uh, um, what they explained is the message we want to deliver within the demo and within the meeting with the customer, then they get full marks. If they're missing something, then they get less marks and so on. So that was an interesting uh, trial of, uh, of that capability where Jenny didn't ask questions. She just listened. Um, another thing that we are very, uh, 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 very happy to start doing now is kind of create a, um, a program. Maybe it's too early to discuss, uh, Ariel, but create a program in, in the conversation, not in the roadmap kind of thing. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a program that we choose a product that we want to see uh, a change in the pipeline or in in the um, in kind of the the opportunity in this in the because our our sellers are are. Uh, are um, kind of uh, uh, updating um, our CRM with the, the the content that they're delivering. I had this meeting, had this call, and so on. And the topic that they're they're speaking to the customers about, and we're kind of creating a four stage program where we're actually trying to teach them how to deliver the customer presentation, something short, something concise, and Jenny will give them feedback on it. Jenny is the customer, and they will give they will get feedback on that. Second is uh, um, telling the story again uh, about different products. Another exercise is objection handling, which is crucial because sometimes you get an objection from left field and you have no idea and you start mumbling and, and stumbling on your own words. And the last exercise is an actual conversation. Um, you ask the customer, you ask Jenny, okay, so tell me a bit about your challenges. And Jenny needs now to respond. It's not only um to ask questions out of you know out of blue and someone that needs to answer so this is something that i think gonna take us like one kind of one step uh, ahead in in our efforts to uh to provide uh, more knowledge and of course the skill set this is the main thing provide them a skill set and a sandbox a safe area where they can make tons of mistakes and correct them and from history we see that most of them do at least three exercises sorry three times the same exercise to improve and we see the improvement. I don't remember the numbers, but from an average of, I think it was like 70 or sorry, even less, uh, uh, I don't know, 60 or whatever. I mean, most of them jump to an average of about 80, which means that they have learned something in the process, whether if it's even, because we're not teaching how to speak, okay? But if they picked up on those three uh, key points or the benefits or whatever it is that we want them to pick up on and they do it, this is something that stays with them because they, practiced it and they did it uh, many times some of them I actually seen practices of people doing it 10 times okay not because they wanted to um, to improve the score because some of them got a good score from the beginning but again we are a technology company so they're testing the system now right and provide and they provide feedback on the system said okay she didn't pick up this word or or uh, um, she said this and it wasn't the case and so on so we do a lot of uh, um, of that as well and, and I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, the experience with the second nature people um, has been amazing, very responsive, you know, uh, um, a few hours and you get the responses, there are issues, then they're corrected. I mean, that's uh, amazing, amazing experience. Wow, that, that's very kind, very kind. So I, I would just say, just to break it out a little bit, I think that a few things that you touch upon that I want to highlight or, or put some focus on. One is this kind of repetitive motion, right? When you think about coaching, that you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your peer. It's about having a conversation. It's about trial and error. It's about doing things multiple times. And uh, I think that what we've seen in the data 
And in the feedback is that they do get that. So they get this kind of feedback and motivation to do it again and then do it multiple times and improving, even if it's in a short session, like overall it can take 30 minutes or 45 minutes that they've done it multiple times, but from one time to another, they're getting more confident with it. I think that's one thing that, that's really interesting was to see in the data and in the feedback from people in the surveys. I think that, uh, and really hard to do at scale. So if you have a small team of five, 10 people, you can do it with them just one-on-one. -on -one. But when you have a few thousand, that's like, it's really hard to do it consistently across the board. So that's an amazing thing that, that happened right, in this. Right. It's the scale and, and speed. Again, pretty much anyone can do 2000 people in a year, right? You right. just, you know, fly around, getting on the sessions, do the training workshops and so on. But COVID hit and you can't fly now, or at least from here, you can't fly. So. <laughs> What are we doing? How can we do that within a month? I mean, this is the type of questions. By the way, we haven't touched it, but the the onboarding process, which we leverage Jenny for that as well, right? Um, now, usually uh, a checkpoint. What we used to do, we have two onboarding uh, um, types of uh, engagements. One of them is the entry level, where we take people with less experience and so on, people right out of college and stuff like that, and we used to bring them to Israel for nine weeks. We couldn't do that this year or even uh, last year sorry we right. couldn't do that and so we had to create a lot of content that should be that can be uh, e-learning and we were fed up with tests tests just means that you know you answered the the questions correctly does it really show understanding does it really mean that you can take the knowledge that you accumulated and you can throw it up on on the paper but can you turn it into words when you speak to a customer add or being like new being nervous and you know not being exactly sure what happens this is exactly where jenny comes in where you consume all that information you get some hybrid uh, type of uh, some uh, um, uh, live sessions like what we call sync um, sync synchronic uh, uh, sessions and asynchronic sessions and then the test is no longer um you know like uh, multiple choice questions the test is jenny can you take all that information and now speak to a customer. So that's that's the let's say the very basic or for the entry level type. Another onboarding is for NHO. We call it NHO. It's new hire um, or uh, orientation. And again, it was a week in Israel. These are people that are more uh, veterans, uh, sales, SEs, you know, more technical people with at least like five years experience uh, in the industry. And here again, we had to change everything. So. For the technical people, we're still thinking on how to leverage Jenny on that in a, in a, um, a very kind of uh, focused way. But for the salespeople, it's a no-brainer. Consume the information, ask questions, and uh, and practice with your peers, and then show up for the final exam. The final exam is Jenny. Absolutely, so, that that's that's spot on. And and then just to make sure, as we're getting close to the end of the of our time and uh, so a everybody feel free to ask questions in the chat and just to show that we're serious about it let's just touch upon what alan said with regards to channels and enabling the channels is it right now are we are you using jenny only to enable the team that works directly for checkpoint or is it already deployed and rolled out to people who are not working directly for checkpoint but works in a channel reseller organizations so what's your kind of rollout uh, has been so far and kind of potentially in the future as it pertains to channels? So right now, as you mentioned, this is only for Checkpoint employees. Uh, we train also uh, uh, SDR. They leverage the, the uh, SDR, the uh, sales development reps, so the uh, inside sales. Mm -hmm. um, they lev we leverage that with them as well. And uh, of course, our salespeople, our channel managers, and our SCs. So currently, it's uh, internal to Checkpoint. Um, there are already words speaking about uh, uh, taking it to our channels, to our uh, partners, and seeing how we can leverage Jenny to teach our partner community to speak Checkpoint with their with their customers. Um, and definitely something that is in 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 our thoughts, and uh, we want to see how that goes forward. Absolutely. And I think that for channels, just to touch upon that, as this was discussed, what we've seen with, with other organizations we're working with, one of the key benefits is that you get more visibility, right? Because with your internal team, 
you can go on a call with them as a sales manager, you can kind of test them, you can get more visibility into how well they know the material and how much of the top of mind that is. With channels or resellers, you're like one step remote. Like you cannot record their calls. You cannot go on, on their calls with them because they want to preserve the customer and you don't really know how they're presenting your company. So I think with Checkpoint, we're not there yet. We haven't rolled it out to the channel organization with other accounts that we're working with. They have been doing going through this and kind of having a lot more, A, a kind of winning the top of mind and B, getting the visibility. So that's definitely, a, once you roll it out, Sagi so will come back again and we'll do one for channels. Uh, I think uh, if there are questions, put them on the chat. Otherwise I'll go on with, with kind of the KPIs and measurements. And you touched upon it briefly, but like, how do you measure how do you know that something was successful? So everybody likes it. Okay, great. The participation rates are higher than before. Awesome. The feedback is uh, is is good on the surveys. Great. But what's what's currently can you see in the data, and what what's the plans for kind of uh, connecting it better into business KPIs? Uh, great question because I think attribution is something that is very very difficult. And, and that's why uh, um, I don't try to say that, okay, this is because of this. Um, I, I'd like to be the one who influences. Um, and and with that said, talking about outcomes. So what do I expect to happen? So we are in very close ties and, and conversations as a training organization with the business leaders. And we ask them, where do you want to be six months from now? Okay, do you want to double ARR? Do you want to, I don't know, double your pipe, whatever, whatever it is. We, and then what we do is we do some sort of like reverse engineering. And, and then again, everything at the end of the day is starting as a pipeline, right? Uh, the, the meeting, is it an opportunity? Is it not opportunity? And so on. So the way that uh, um, one of the KPIs that we are starting to measure now, because um, I just, uh, if I, I, I didn't say it before, I'm going to say it now. There has been six or seven months since we've been uh, officially running uh, with uh, Second Nature, eight months, yeah, eight months. And uh, um, what we want to compare is to last year. So we're comparing the number of opportunities per uh, the, diff the different product, the different solutions that we had exercises on. And what we hope to see is a positive change. We'd like to see the, uh, um, the, um, um, forgot the word. Hold on. Convert, convert. Uh, the conversion, conversion rate. Yes, the conversion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> the conversion rate, um, and how it progresses through the sales uh, uh, sales process. So right. how many from pipeline turn into best case? How many from best case turn into a win? And so on and so on. And uh, um, hopefully we'll see more. And then at the end, something that we when we see the, the booking, for example, it's too late already, right? But we do want to see that aside from the regular yearly growth that we expect or we get and so on, if checkman grows X amount each year, I want to see more. Okay, so if we, I'm just uh, throwing numbers here, just uh, if we, I don't know, um, I don't know, double our numbers each year, I want to see more than double because we doubled our numbers each year without second nature. So what is the value, sure. right? So I want to see sure. more. And I, think, and I think attribution is always tough because there's so many things that go into account and go into consideration, whether right. it's a new sales methodology or a new, uh, thank you, Alan. New thank pricing. Uh, yeah, new pricing. Whatever, yeah. But I think that what we found is that the more narrow you make the KPIs, the better is it's aligned with with the training that you gave. So for example, if the training was about a specific product or a specific product going into a specific segment or mm -hmm. about new hire onboarding or about like a competitive positioning versus a specific competitor, you track those mini KPIs, those focus KPIs, and then the attribution or the correlations are easier to measure and easier to show. Exactly, uh, so one of the things I didn't say before, one of the things with onboarding is that we one of the things that we received from the field from the manager said okay i know that they consumed all this information but i have no idea what they can do what are they able to do 
right? So when we entered the Jenny into the onboarding session, I think it was a quarter ago, um, one of the things that I called these managers again, and I said, listen, they also finished it. They're able to do that, test them. And they, and they said, are you sure? And I said, hey, test them, okay? Yeah. Uh, and, and they did. And I can say that eight out of 10 times, they were happy with the results. Again, I can't comment on closing deal, not closing deal, but from a place where the managers uh, said, I have no idea what they're able to do. And now I tell them, listen, they're able now to tell the cloud guard story or the harmony story or whatever, test them. And they were happy with the results, which means that um, down the line, um, we get better prepared people after uh, an onboarding, uh, um, it's not a session, but an onboarding process. And hopefully, we'll be able to cut short the onboarding process, which means that we have more viable salespeople faster in the field. And that it's, this it by itself is worth millions. Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll remember that to our next uh, renewal uh, discussion. Uh, no, it's just joking. I, I think that that's great. Uh, if there are any questions from uh, the team, feel free to kind of post them in the chat, we already kind of talked about a little bit about the channels and resellers and so on. I think that uh, we're also getting near to the end of the time. Uh, I think that one of the things that's amazing and you know, we're working with a lot of organizations uh, is the dedication and the seriousness that people take training. And I think it's not trivial because every organization is, is different and the culture is different but just kind of uh, working with, with Checkpoint and their team, kind of taking trainings seriously. Uh, and I think that going in and doing the exercises uh, was, was really great to see the completion rates and the participation. I think in addition, one other thing that worked really nicely for us is kind of how we integrated this with the LMS so that we had uh, everything consolidated in one place. So maybe to kind of sum up the, the the session we can touch upon that and then any other last words that you want to share uh, sure, absolutely the team. absolutely so we uh, again we believe and i believe that the the trainee or, or the salesperson needs to have one system okay we can't send them uh like different links this is for that system this is for this system and so on so our lms is the one-stop shop from it they go to the different uh, uh, screens and everything is monitored and measured through the LMS, same as second nature. So once we release a new exercise, they click on the exercise, they're seeing the, um, the second nature screen and they are doing the exercise. Once they complete the exercise with APIs, second nature updates the LMS automatically so that they complete it plus the score, of course. So then when we generate reports once a week, once a month, whatever, we know exactly the status of each person in every exercise. We have also integrated with our uh, Active Directory. So now every manager can go into the system and see his team and where are they in regards to the different solutions, what are the proficiency uh, rating and so on. We have a nice heat map that's saying, okay, here he's red, here he's orange. This is the stuff you need to work on with him or tell him to go do the, the exercise again and so on. So this has been very beneficial. We started rolling out that specific integration, uh, I think about two weeks ago. So we're yet to see kind of um, high level of usage, but it will come because it's an amazing tool that provides the, the, the first line managers with the information they need on what to invest, where to invest in terms of knowledge and, and, and skill of their teams. Brilliant. That's such a nice way to kind of sum it up. So we talked about uh, the experience we talked about uh, kind of removing the weight of the manager hands uh, initially and now we kind of bring it back full circle into the benefits of the manager seeing the recordings after it's integrated automatically to their kind of org chart and, and knowing who reports to whom and which people needs to be presented for each manager so again uh, i think that we're reaching the end of our time and end of our session i want to thank everybody for joining us here we have a second nature booth as well so anyone who wants to learn more feel free to uh, uh, check in our booth uh, we're there and we'd be happy to speak with you as well as uh, online we're second nature.ai feel free to book a demo 
and learn more about that. Sagi, thank you so much for spending the time out of your home gym today playing with us and then the sharing that great insights about the rollout with the checkpoint. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you for inviting me.